Welcome to the Potter's House. Once again, I'm Bishop Steve Williams, pastor of New Life Apostolic Temple. We're located at the Center Mall on 42nd and Center, 2nd Level, Room 214. Our service hours are Sunday, school 9.30 to 11 a.m., worship service 11.45 a.m. to 1.30. Then we have Bible class on Wednesdays, 7.30 to 9 p.m. You can join us at any of our services. If you need a ride, feel free to give me a call at 402-614-2714 or 402-769-9007. Before I get into today's topic, I want to remind you that if you're having problems with your marriage, children, uh, your jobs, family members, no matter what the problem is, I'm here to let you know that Jesus can fix it. We have a 24-hour prayer line, and you can reach me at 402-769-9007-247. Or you can email me at lc5050 at cox.net. And when you do call me, I want to remind you once again, I get quite a few calls. So if all you need is prayer, just leave your name and ask them for prayer. If you need prayer for a special reason, you can uh, let me know. Or if you want to have me call you back because you haven't gotten in touch with me, just leave a message that you want me to return your call, and I will return it at my earliest convenience. Now, my subject for this Sunday is hear his voice, arise, and be baptized. I'm coming out of the book of Acts, chapter number 22, starting at verse number 14. It reads as thus, and he said, the God of our fathers has chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will and see that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Now, as I have mentioned in my former programs, baptism is very essential. And that's why when we look here at this particular uh, scripture, it says, uh, why tarriest thou? Why are you waiting? Baptism is so important. Now is the time to get up and be baptized in the name of Jesus to, for the washing away of your sins. I, I want to say this before I get too far into my message this morning. A lot of people don't realize that the second coming of the Lord, he is coming again. No matter what you may think or what you may say, we're not going to stop the Lord from coming. Our job is to be ready when he comes. The thing about it is this, the devil knows that his time is short, and he's doing everything he can to keep you from receiving God's word. This morning, you might be at home, amen, in the bed, laying on your couch, sitting in a chair, wherever you might be. You've got to remember the scripture said, arise now. What are you waiting for? Now is the time to get baptized in Jesus' name because tomorrow is not promised. I don't know if I'm going to be here on Monday morning, but I know, Lord, I'm here right now. And what's keeping me from receiving your word? Now, hear what I'm saying. I said, hear his voice. Well, let's take a look at the voice of the Lord. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 28 so you can see for yourself. Um, and starting at verse number 16 is where we want to start. Matthew 28 and 16 because he starts right here. It says, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. When it comes to knowing who Jesus is, there can be no doubt. I know there's some of you that's sitting out there listening to me this morning. You know that Jesus is real. You know that he can change your life. But knowing and not doing anything about it, it's two different things. If I know that Jesus is real, let me do something about it. Because he said in the book of Mark, 
He that believeth and is baptized. We got a lot of folks. I believe, I believe, I believe. But the scripture says, he that believeth and is baptized. What are you talking about? There has to be some action behind your belief. You can't just go around saying, I believe that Jesus is real. I believe that he's this and he's that. Where is your action? See, it don't do you no good to sit at home and say, I believe that I'm going to get a job. But you never go out and look. Amen. You never fill out no application. Amen. You never do anything, amen, to show confidence that you believe. You just sit home talking about, I believe. Well, you'll never get a job sitting at home saying you believe. There have to be some action. What are you saying, Bishop? I'll never be able to do the things that God wants me to do by just saying, staying at home saying I believe. How often do you go to church? It seems like folk only want to go to church at Easter and at Christmas. The two times you want to go to church. What about the other 363 days of the year? Amen. Amen. Can I give God any time? One day, two days of a year? Someone that loved me enough to die in my stead. Jesus didn't have no sin. Amen. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Jesus had none. We were full of it. But he loved us enough where he stepped in and he died in our place. That's right. The, if I get a chance, I'm, I'm going to be going over some of the scriptures uh, this morning. But the suffering that Jesus went through, the beatings that he took, amen, the, the whippings that he took, uh, uh, they pulled, amen, hair off his face, amen. The scripture said he was beat beyond recognition said there was so much blood that it looked like he walked the wine press by himself. He went through all this that we might have an opportunity to make heaven our home. And we can't even get up and go and get baptized in his name. All oh, the blood. Amen. Look at here. He said, even in verse 18, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now let me break this down so you can understand. I don't want you thinking it's me. This is the word of God. Jesus said, yes, he did. What did he say, Bishop? He said, All power. Now, I'm assuming when you see the word all, that means there's nothing left for anybody else. If I have a pie and I give you all the pie, there ain't nothing left for me or anybody else because you got it all. What are you saying? Jesus said all power in heaven and on earth is his. So if you don't believe that Jesus is God, whoever your God is, watch this. He ain't got no power. Amen. Because Jesus already said, in heaven and on earth, it all belongs to me. Amen. So whatever we do, we have to do it all in the name of Jesus. And that even includes baptism. Now, let's move down to verse number 19 because everybody loves that verse. Amen. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So we all want to run out and get baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But you missed the most important part of verse number 19. It says, go ye therefore and teach. What is it that I need to teach? I need to teach them the name of the Father. I need to teach them the name of the Son. And I need to teach them the name of the Holy Ghost. When I know that, then I'm able to baptize in that name. Now, Peter was there when Jesus, that's why I say, hear his voice. 
arise and be baptized. Peter was there when Jesus told them to go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So Peter was there. But watch this. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter number 2. And let's see what Peter did. Because Peter was there. You can't deny the fact. He was one of the disciples. But when we go to Acts, chapter 2, and we start at verse number 38. I, I want to start at 36. But uh, I'm, my time is limited. But uh, on Acts chapter 2, verse 38, it said, Then Peter said, well, you know what? I'm not going to even start there. I am going to start at 36. Amen. If I run out of time, Lord willing, I'll be back next Sunday. Amen. And if you want to get it before next Sunday, all you need to do is get up and come on down to the 42nd and Center, the Center Mall, uh, second level, room 214. Come on in, and you'll get it ahead of everybody else. But I'm going to give it to you because God gave it to me. Here in Acts chapter 2, verse 36, it says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus, not another one. Amen. See, this is the same one that everybody hollered crucify. Amen. This is the same one, amen, that everybody allowed to be beaten. This is the same one. Nobody wants to go down in his name. There's not another one. That same Jesus, amen, it says, whom you have crucified is now both Lord and Christ. Lord means God. Christ means anointed. He is God the anointed. Now watch this. Verse 37, now, when they had heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So Peter was there. When they heard what? When they heard the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When they heard how? They tied him and beat him beyond recognition. When they heard how his flesh was ripped open, amen, blood everywhere, they said he was beat so bad that no one even wanted to look upon his face. He was shredded, amen. A cat of nine tails. That's a whip with nine leather straps. On the end of each strap was a metal ball. On those metal balls, there were spikes. When they whipped him, the spikes ripped open his flesh. The scripture says he never said a mumbling word. Amen. Amen. We complain if we get a headache. Amen. But look at the suffering that our Lord and Savior went through that we might have an opportunity to make heaven our home. Yes, I've said it before. It's nice to know that, yes, Jesus walked on water. He changed water to wine. He healed the blind. He healed the lame. Beautiful, because he did. But the most important thing he did was die for our sins. That we might have an opportunity to make heaven my home. Amen. He had no sin. Amen. But they beat him beyond recognition. And if that had been too little, they took him and they put a heavy cross on his beaten back to have him walk up to Gorgotha Hill. He was so weak, they said a young man had to come out and help him with the cross. When he got to the hill, 
they took railroad spikes, you know, because, you know, you think nails. and the, It wasn't those little nails that we got here. These were huge railroad spikes. And they nailed his hands to the cross. Amen. I'm like the song where I can almost hear the hammers ringing every time it came down on the nail. Now watch this. He was in the flesh. He felt pain just like you feel pain. But he endured the suffering that there might be joy for us. They nailed his feet to the cross. Not another Jesus. This same Jesus. And watch this. When they had him nailed to the cross, they lifted it up. They didn't ease it down into the hole. They dropped it. And you could almost see every nerve in his body as it began to shake. But he never said a mumbling word. Amen. Even after he had died, that wasn't enough for the Roman soldiers. They had to come by and take a spear piercing in his side. The scripture said, out come blood and water. No wonder the scripture says, hear his voice, arise and be baptized. He did all that for us. And the only requirement he asks is that we be baptized in his name and filled with his spirit. And we don't even want to do that. Amen. That's right. Amen. See, when they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? How can we rectify what we did to Jesus? Oh, they had a chance. Amen. Because Pilate said, who should I release, Barabbas or Jesus? Barabbas was a murderer and a thief. And that's who they wanted. What are you saying, Bishop? We would rather, in this day and time, we would rather run around with murderers and thieves than come to the house of God and be with Jesus. You think about it. Amen. When's the last time you went to church? When's the last time you even opened up your Bible to read the Word of God? When is the last time you offered up a prayer? Too busy running with your friends that are getting you in trouble, doing drugs, amen, fighting, shooting, amen. Amen mistreating your companion. Where's the love? Scriptures say God is love. And see, no matter what we do, we think God's going to take us to heaven. I got news for you. If we don't do it the way he said do it, we ain't going nowhere. Amen. He said, verse 30, Then Peter said unto them, Repent. The first thing I need to do, repent means to change my life. Change the way that I'm living. Change the way I'm doing things. Amen. Let me try to do God's will. Repent. Then he turned around and said, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. He didn't say Father, Son. And Holy Ghost. Because Father's not a name. Son's not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name. 
But Jesus is the name. Jesus is the one that died for you. Why is it, Bishop, that we must call on the name of Jesus? Because the name of Jesus brings the blood. Hebrews 9.22 said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Your sins will not be removed unless you bring the blood. And the name of Jesus brings the blood. I told someone once, they said, well, what happens when I'm just baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? I said, you go down a dry demon, and you come up a wet demon. Amen. Because it didn't do you no good. It didn't change nothing. But when I go down in the name of Jesus, amen. Now watch this. While I'm under the water, amen. Amen. The Lord performs a miracle. He opens up my chest. He reaches in and he takes out the heart of stone and puts in a heart of flesh. And he sews me back up. And when I come up out of the water, you don't even see a stitch. What are you talking about? Amen. The name is important. You, and after I've been baptized in his name, and my sins have been removed, he said, and you shall receive. God can't lie. We lie all the time. And God can't lie. He said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for it's a promise. Amen. The promise is unto you, to your children, and to all them that are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. He's calling you. This morning, calling you to get up out of that chair, calling you to get up out of that bed, calling you to get up off that couch, amen, and to come on down to 42nd and Center, second level, room 214. Arise and be baptized, every one of you, amen. The scripture says, as many as receive the word, this morning you're receiving the word. What does it take for me to get you up out of that chair, off that couch, out of that bed? Amen. You need a ride? Give us a call. Amen. You need prayer? Give us a call. Amen. See, Jesus is coming and it won't be long. I'm trying to help as many people as I possibly can to get out of here. He said, well, Bishop, you seem to be preaching the same message every Sunday, dealing with baptism in Jesus' name and being filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me let you in on another person that preached the same message. Amen. Noah, for 120 years, he preached one message. It's going to rain. Get ready, it's going to rain. Nobody believed him. Nobody wanted to receive it. Amen. But he kept preaching the message. Now watch this. One day, it rained. And it rained for 40 days, and it rained for 40 nights. See, when God closed the door, because he's the one that closed the door to the ark. Because had Noah closed it, when he heard those people beating, amen, wanting to get in, he'd open the door and let them in. But they couldn't get in because they didn't do what God told them to do. What are you saying, Bishop? We're not going to be able to get into heaven unless we do what God is telling us to do. When he comes, and he takes his church out of here. Huh? It ain't going to do you any good to come to 42nd and Center then. After the rapture come, amen, chances are won't be nobody down there. Because everybody that's coming now, amen, I'm trying to prep them and get them ready to get out of here. Amen. Whenever you're going somewhere, 
you got to get prepared. We're preparing to go to heaven. But it starts with Acts 2.38. It starts with you repenting. It starts with you being baptized. Arise. Amen. Why are you waiting? What are you waiting for? Arise and be baptized. The Ethiopian eunuch, when he was talking with Philip in the desert, Philip told him about baptism in the name of Jesus and the things that Jesus had went through, the suffering. When the Ethiopian eunuch heard it, he told Philip, he said, here is water, Philip. What hinders thou? What's keeping you from baptizing me right now? Here's water. Amen. I need to get to the point where I say, uh, what's hindering me? What's stopping me? Friends? Family? Uh, 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 people on my job? What's keeping me from doing God's will? I've got to save myself. That's what he said. Amen. Verse number 40, still in Acts chapter 2. And with many other words did he testify and exhort saying, save yourself. This morning, save yourself. Amen. From this untoward generation. That's right. It ain't going to get no better. It's only going to get worse. Amen. Amen. You can't help nobody until you help yourself. That's right. I'm not going to be able to finish this all, but I'll be back. Amen. See, I'm trying to call you out of darkness into a marvelous light. Don't let the call go. Unanswered. Lord, bless each and every one that is viewing, amen, this program this morning, that they might hear your word, receive your word, and be a doer of your word, to get up, amen, to say to themselves, arise, it's time for me to be baptized. Lord, allow them to come on down, amen, 42nd and center, amen. Second level, room 214. God will bless you. God bless you and keep you is our prayer.